But no, I don't read. I consume their thoughts. Oh, it feeds me. Okay, I, I gotta talk about Stransky and the Mysterious House. Chances are, if you've been on the internet at all recently, you've seen this movie. It's a big fat meme right now, and it's just, it's just absolutely incredible. Everything from the animation to the writing is just so bad it's good. It's the next big movie, so... Ugh. Let's just, let's just talk about it. At this point in time, animation is the most accessible it's literally ever been. Whereas before, you were forced to make it all the way out to Hollywood in one of the few animation studios that existed and draw frame by frame pictures for some stupid mouse to fuel one man's capitalistic greed for dominance of the entertainment market. Now all you need is a shitty computer, your older brother's pirated copy of Adobe Animate, and an idea, and you have what it takes to be the next Walter Disney. This new access to technology and opportunity leads us to the age of the independent animation. Now it seems like the next Toy Story can be made in your own stupid home because Steam just gives away Blender for free. And this world of independent animation is the gosh dang wild wild west. I mean, there's uh, there's anything out here. This stuff ranges from really good to really, 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 really not good. That's what leads us to today's topic, a little known piece of independent animation known as Strawinsky and the Mysterious House. With a title like that, you know it's just gonna be a barrel of fun. Now first off, I'm not the first or last YouTuber to talk about this, mostly because this movie blew up in the public eye when one of the songs from it became like a giant meme. More on that later. But I do have my own thoughts and opinions, and I can't not talk about that. I mean, look at this. How can I not talk about this? Just think back to when everyone talked about Food Fight. I mean, everyone was okay with that. So we good? Good. Back to the story. Stru Strawinsky and the Mysterious House is self-described on its own website as a magical adventure inspired by the Chronicles of Narnia, Walt Disney animated musicals, and the parables by Jesus Christ. You know, cause all three of those things, they just fit right in the same sentence. You know, Disney, Chronicles of Narnia, the Bible. Now if any one of you have actually seen this magical and wondrous piece of animation gold, you might be just as confused as me. Because besides tiny little details, this movie seems to take nothing from any of the three listed here. I mean, unless my boy David Hutter is a wizard of modern symbolism, I truly cannot see the connection to any Disney property. If anything, this movie is a direct adaptation of a six-part German fantasy audio drama from the 80s, and I'm not making that up, that's the literal truth. If you don't care about that, you care about the story, which is basically Strawinsky and his friends doing shit in a weird house for, it's like a half hour long. But this half hour of literal bliss is actually the third part of the overall story. The motherfucker started in the middle of the story. Like, this world has lore and characters and stuff that's not really explained and it might be confusing, and that's not storytelling, that's literally laziness. According to David Hunter, first two parts were far too ambitious for me in terms of their location, setting, story, and effects. I therefore decided it would be a lot more realistic to start with a movie that takes place in a single small location, i.e. a mysterious house. Oh yeah, did, did I mention this guy has literally never made an animated movie before? Uh, let's look at the backstory here real quick. Maybe this movie will make a little bit more sense if you know the history. It all started back in the wonderful mystical year of 2007. David Hutter was a young boy just finishing up his degree in business school when he decided that he wanted to make an animated movie. This is what launched in the incredible 11 year journey to where we are today. But with no experience, budget, and little time on his hands, David was lost on how to make his vision a reality. That's when he found something that changed his life forever. Something that inspired him to make Strawinsky. It was none other than Scott fucking Cawthon, the FNAF guy. See, before making his McDonald's-like franchise of horror games, Scott actually was known for a different art, lean Christian content. This is more well known now, but before before FNAF, Cawthon was doing justice to the Bible with his incredible 3D animations. The one that matters to us though is a little ditty known as The Pilgrim's Progress. See, during the lowest point of David's creative rut, he saw this movie and it changed him forever. He was literally, quote, moved to tears by the movie and claimed it far exceeded the quality of early VeggieTales animation. Judging from what I've seen of The Pilgrim's Progress, these reactions are completely justified. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, David is a hardcore Christian and this is not an understatement. If you go on his movie's website, and look up articles about him, he mentions it a lot. In fact, the entire movie has religious undertones that are more than obvious, but we'll, again, we'll get to that later. It's just important to know for future reference. David spent the next 11 years working to make this movie happen. He upgraded equipment, found and hired voice actors, and most impressively, taught all of this to himself. There was no ghost of John Lasseter's career standing behind his chair. David is completely self-taught here. And that's why I'm telling you all this now, before we go into the movie. Everyone right now loves to shit on something like this. It looks bad, it's awkward, you know, it's, it's, it's laughable. But they're looking at it at face value. They don't even consider the amount of work that goes into making a project like this. I mean, animation is hard. There's a story behind every movie, and a person, if not an entire team, put all of their hearts into it. So I'm gonna try not to be too hard in this movie, for David's sake, because he did work hard on it. Well, I think we should go inside. Me too. I want to find out what's in there. I mean, I mean I'm gonna try my hardest. <laughs> 
You might be watching roundtable videos all hours of the day like me and think, hmm, how do I help out the roundtable even more? Well, then I got the answer for you, ma'am. You can become a member on our Patreon. But Retro Nemo, what does this mean? What do I get? Well, if you're a member on our Patreon, you're actually helping support the channel, and, and you get a lot of great benefits. There's a $3 tier. For just $3, you get early access to videos, our avatars, scripts, and more. There's even higher tiers, which include shoutouts for a YouTube channel, there's a blog. The sky's the limit here, people. And we're working on even more and greater rewards for you in the future, so now's the time to sign up. The more you support us, the more it will grow, and the more videos we can put out, it'll just be great. But only if you're able to. So if you want to help out and you're feeling generous, consider checking out our Patreon. Back to the review. But enough of the boring history, let's start talking about this movie, because it's quite the trip. So the film opens with our heroes, Strawinsky, Harold, Klopstop, and Elbow, walking into a random forest. I guess they live in this place called Hollywood. Real subtle there, David. I'm guessing there's like a sort of a hundred acre wood thing going on here, which makes sense. The whole thing reeks of a Cyber 8 animation. In this woods, the kids find a haunted old worn down mansion just sitting there. Now, the rabbit guy, he wants no part of this because he's worried the house might be enchanted. Which of course seems to be like those Christian morals coming through. Remember the witch trials? Rough time. But despite the rabbit making valid points, the four decided to go into the house anyways. That's when everything goes from lighthearted fun to pure darkness. Come on, let's find out who's inside. So they enter the house and surprise, surprise, the old mansion in the middle of the woods is empty. Whoa, who'd have thought? But that doesn't stop our heroes from continuing their legally questionable exploration and eventually finding their way to an old basement library. That's when, uh, oh, oh, hold up. I guess a musical number's starting. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention that this thing's a musical too. Strap in, folks. So after the books finish their little musical number, the four get surprised by, uh, a, a leprechaun? I am a troll, as you can see! Oh my bad, he's he's obviously a troll. He reveals himself as the owner of the house, also revealing that he has a supreme problem with repetition. Don't know! No nothing! Don't really know anything! I don't know, maybe this is to be quirky, or the, the actor was bad, I'm just, I don't know. He also, oh shit, oh shit, wait. <laughs> we got another musical number. Yeah, he's really going there. Wow. I guess the kids found gold earlier buried underground and it belongs to him, who by the way, most certainly has a name. I just do not feel the earthly desire to trying to pronounce it. He reveals he was actually ordered by the vaguely mentioned Scarlet Queen to increase the gold or else she'll beat me. Why'd you go and bury it underground, you dummy? Invest that in the stock market. Why didn't you convert that to Bitcoin, you idiot? So basically, Strinsky wants to explore the mansion, but all of his friends want to stay back and read. Come, let's go and find it. No, I want to stay here. You can go, Stravinsky. Then you can tell us all about it. We will stay here. Okay, but don't do anything stupid. So Stravinsky waddles his way upstairs completely alone because he hears music, which seems like a solid plan, but he keeps forgetting he's on some stranger's private property. Like they met the owner, I guess, but I'm quite certain he doesn't want them snooping around his house. Judging by how he acts, I wouldn't be digging around there anyways. You have no idea what you'd find. He eventually finds the source of the music, this sad cello girl. They have a talk about how the cello is incredibly lonely, perhaps David's way of venting about his own personal life in a creative way. This whole conversation is kind of pointless until she mentions the glib glob 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 I can't pronounce Naturally, Strawinsky is confused as to who this is and so he races back down to the library and that's when we first see him. Our knight in shining flesh, the worm beast of memes himself, the glob glob glab glab. This motherfucker squirms his way out of a book and delivers some of the greatest dialogue performed in an animated movie ever, period. You can't argue with me. Blended. Simply delicious. Oh, no. <laughs> the monotone, gun to his head narrator explains how this thing basically eats the books for ideas and nourishment. That sounds insane, it's about to get a lot weirder when his music number starts up. This is the one that got memed, you've probably seen him before, just enjoy this for a second. Schwabble, dabble, glibble, glabber, shwibble, swap, glab. Dibble, double, shwibble, shabble, glibble, glab, swap. Schwabble, dabble, glibble, glabber, shwibble, swap, dab. Double, double, triple, triple, glibber, swap, glab. Oh snap, his friends are missing. Maybe they're kidnapped. Oh, oh, oh wait, no, they just. They're in the corner reading. I guess that's bad? I mean, I don't think. Re oh, 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 okay, there's another musical number. Here we go. The glib glob glob, the glib the glob 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 is also in the middle of showing off how he can just transform when he flips the fuck out and ends up breaking a hole in the ceiling. Bre who's, who's gonna fix that, man? Do they even, do they even want to fix that? Do people even have jobs in this universe? So if you haven't been able to tell here already, this movie is trying its hardest to push a message. And from what I can gather, the message is to beware of reading? I mean, the whole time they're just talking about how bad it is that their friends decided to read and keep dropping major hints. 
I see. You're also affected by the books. You really should be careful with what you fill yourself with. It only gets worse as the movie goes on. In case you didn't get enough screen time with the troll here, he's back and more freaked out than ever. I really can't believe it! <laughs> That must be you. That must have been you! The mood shifts when Stravinsky mentions that he flat out called the heat and invited the Scarlet Queen over. No one likes a rat, Stravinsky. The two freak out because they're morally worried about their situation, I guess? I just- Oh, come on! There's another musical number! Your Majesty, you're here! Oh my god, what a kiss ass. That's your cello, Your Majesty? It once belonged to me, and I played on it the most beautiful melodies I know. But one day, the cello didn't want me anymore. The Rat King had convinced it that it would be so much better to make music by itself and do its own thing. It could then be its own master and play whatever music it wanted. And now, it's so lonely. But what can I do for you, Stravinsky? What is the message here? Are they really teaching kids not to be independent? Who is the Rat King? What is this movie? So Stravinsky continues his trend of being a little bitch by crying to the queen for help about his friends. She's just the best, so she agrees to help him, which leads to some of the most genuinely terrifying out-of-context lines I have ever heard in a children's movie. The Scarlet Queen began to lovingly stroke each of the three friends for a long time. Harold Spikes caused her hand to bleed, but she didn't seem to mind, even though one could see that she was in pain. Once the three friends began to regain consciousness, the Scarlet Queen asked them, Do you want to be free? You have saved us! Thank you! That was very... Stravinsky! Look there! Inside the wardrobe! The Rat King! That's just unfair. You always interfere with my plans. Oh, why is his voice genuinely creepy? So yep, that's the Rat King, everybody. The guy they've talked about the whole movie. You know, he's literally just the devil. It's, it's obvious. I was surprised he gets his own musical number two. I don't know. I'm just, I'm done with all of this. Okay, so like, let me break down the wall here for a second. Now, this film seems totally inconspicuous at face value, I know. But really, there's a deeper meaning here about heaven and hell and choosing your place with God. Just watch this scene and I'll let you decide. The Scarlet Queen is generally acting on behalf of the Great Elohim. And the Great Elohim told me through her that I need to make a decision about whom I want to serve. Him or the Rat King. Back to the story, the Glib Glob Glob Glab then apologizes even though the Queen threw some major shade at him earlier. The Glob Glob Gab Galab used to be a beautiful forest elf lovingly created by the great Elohim. He lost his slender form and became what he is now, big and fat and slow. How awful. And Gulbert just ran away because of course, you know, he's, that's what pussies do. Everyone else walks out and the Queen flies away with the cello who is- Returned to its master. Oh, that sounds bad. Thanks for this incredible recap. How good that everything worked out well in the end. It could have all turned out much worse. It is very good that we know the Scarlet Queen. We know that everything worked out. It ends letting us know that Strawinsky decided to devote his whole life to God. I mean the Great Elowin. Yay. All 30 minutes of this movie are a pure joy to watch. I mean the insanity over the top religious undertones and weird musical numbers place this film strictly under So Bad Is Good. And it's hard to find stuff like that nowadays. With everything in mind, I'm definitely recommending Stravinsky in the Mysterious House to anyone looking for a laugh or having trouble with their fate. And who knows, guys, this is taken from a series. We could see more Stravinsky one day. One can only dream. Thanks for watching the video, guys. I'm Retro Nemo. If you want more Roundtable in your life, you can follow us at Roundtable Vids with our Instagram and Facebook under the same name, or at it's Retro Nemo for my personal Twitter if you want to see me. We have a Snapchat Roundtable YT for little goofs we capture throughout the day. If you're feeling generous, you can consider supporting us on Patreon and have your name featured like all these great people here. And if you pay a little extra, you can actually get a shout out. As always, if you enjoyed this video, give it a like and share it, and subscribe to the Roundtable for some great cartoon content. As always, I'm Retro Nemo. This has been I don't know, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye. Uh -huh.